App Critique is one of the UX interview rounds. Facebook famously has it as one of their first rounds. They had it in 2018 and I can confirm they still have it in 2022 because I just got one. Bash has it in their on-site presentation but they called it a heuristic evaluation. And Chime also had it as one of their sessions in their 5 hour long on-site interview. In my opinion, I think app critique is such a confusing term, especially for those who are new to it. Because an app means UI or UX or software. Is calculator an app? Can an app be a game? Is critique just talking about an app? Should I praise it? Should I say it's terrible? Can I actually prepare for it? Recruiters can tell you there's nothing to prepare. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That's a total deceptive scamming lie. Calm down. If you want to do it right, and increase your chance to nail app critique, here's what I have for you. This is a very simple two-part video. I will start with the approach and mindset towards app critique, and then I will go for a framework of questions of how you can dissect an app in four different lenses. There are 30 plus questions and I will break them down one by one and show you how I will approach them. Now grab your favorite drink and let's get into it. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Here are the questions on the right, but let's first establish the right mindset. And the best way to do it is with design thinking, by focusing on the users, which will be the hiring managers. We need to flip our minds here, focus on their needs, what do they need from you in this interview round, in this app critique. The interview is not about you, it's about them, what do they they need and what they need from you is product and design fluency. It's about how fluent you are in talking about products, business strategies and design choices. If you can talk about those, you are showing them that you have a good grip and fluency. You meet their needs, you pass their critique. If you don't, well, you don't. Therefore, what I have here on the right is a framework with sets of questions to help you prepare for that product and design fluency through four different lenses. Product, interaction design, visual design, and motion design. If you want a copy of this, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, and I will respond to you with the worksheet within 24 hours. And now let's start with the first part, product. What is this app? about what problem is this app trying to solve. Each app should have a purpose. It should provide users with value. It might help them solve some problems, bring them some convenience. What is it? What is the app about? For example, Uber might be getting you a ride from point A to point B. Uber Eats save you some time, bring you convenience, deliver your food to your home at your doorstep. Next, who are the users? Who is this app designed for? Think about it as persona, archetype, are they soccer moms, college students, teenagers, people with disability, people who are super busy, or people who are on vacation and want to do something fun? What is it about? Who is it for? Next, what are use cases? What are the flows? What are those users trying to do? And how do they use the app? So for example, each app should have a golden flow and maybe even a few golden flows. For Uber, it's probably putting your starting point, putting your end point, Pick your vehicle and then you hit request a ride. That may be the golden flow. For Spotify, maybe you find a song, add it to a playlist. One way to look at it is look at their bottom navigation, if they have one. Each of the tabs in their bottom navigation should signal what the app is about. For example, Pinterest, we have the home feed, we have the search. So search is one golden flow. Browsing home feed is also one golden flow. So take a look at that. Next is what are the company metrics, right? Because when we talk about products, there's always metrics, there are always some numbers. For Airbnb, officially is how many nights, the number of nights booked for YouTube is their watch time, how much time people spend on watching videos on YouTube. One way to look at it is you can go to their earnings call, investor relations, especially for publicly traded companies. And another big hint I have for you is I've actually made the video about this regarding product managers, products, and how you can find these metrics by digging through their website. I'll have a link up in the corner and description down below. Next, how does this app help the company make money, right? Products, services, you provide value, people should pay for the service for the value. So how does that help? For Google, for YouTube, for Pinterest, ads, for Airbnb, you design good experiences so that people book 
Airbnb, when they're traveling, so the company makes money. What is that relationship? Think about it, look at it. Why do you think this feature is added? When you go to Airbnb mobile app, for example, there are so many different categories of stays. You have vineyards, you have amazing views, you have full, you have beachfront, tree houses, mansions, tiny homes, lakefront. Why is this feature added? Why do you need so many different categories? Well, maybe by offering people more choices, more varieties, more unique stays, people like to book those places. They find those interesting. So when people decide to pay for it, that increase the number of nights that they stay on Airbnb. Then it ties to the metrics. It makes it a better product. It helps company make money. Yeah, see how all these are connected now? Next, what feature do you think is missing? So maybe when you poke into the apps, you find out, oh, you really need a search bar there because you envision, you think about how people are gonna interact with the UI. When the, when the user gets to this screen, their mental model is to search for this particular item, but there's no search bar there. So a search bar feature should be included in here. So provide your rationale, your thinking, your hypothesis, elaborate on that. Next, how many related apps does this company have? So for example, Lyft will have the passenger app and the driver app. Same with DoorDash, there's the Dasher slash driver app and the consumer uh, shopping app. So how are they related? What is the sister app? Because one company could have multiple apps and they're interlinked with each other. So think about the dynamics between those apps and see how one can influence the other when you add another design feature, for example. And of course, what do you think about that? When you have an interlinked, interdependent system, what ideas, what features you can come up with can benefit both apps. And that is product. Next, let's go into interaction, interaction design. So when you open an app, what is your impression on the landing screen? So when you land on it, what do you see? And how do you think it will work? And this is before you touch anything. When you just look at the landing screen, how do you think it will work? Is it a horizontal scroll? Is it a vertical scroll? Is there a bottom navigation? You're gonna tap or is it swipe dependent? What is this? Describe it. Next is, what is the information architecture? How did that help solve users problem? One way to look at it is look at the bottom navigation. If they have like five tabs, that kind of basically tell you this app is broken down into five different parts. And that is architecture, it's how to branch out from those five paths. And then once you identify that, ask yourself a follow-up question. Why? Why is the app structured that way? And then ask yourself, what do you think about that? Does this five tab structure make sense? Is it better with three? Yes, no, why? Because A, B, C, and D. Next follow-up question, what would you do differently? If you don't think the five tab nav bar is the right choice, then what would it be? Should it be three, one? Zero? What do you think? Offer your opinion. Offer your alternative solutions. Next, what is the navigation model? Is it a side-to-side -side carousel swipe? Is it a bottom nav? Top nav? Is it a drag and drop? Is it pan? Does it go left and right, up and down, come in a modal overlay? What is that navigation model when you interact with the app? How do you interact with the content on the home screen? That kind of related to the first one with the impression. This is more specifically about that interaction when you start interact with the home screen if it's a waterfall structure waterfall layout like pinterest it's like vertical swipe or vertical scroll or is it a card layout you have boom 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 uh, and why do you think it's laid out that way is there a particular reason that's laid out in a waterfall versus a card or a, a different type of home screen and what do you think about that do you think it makes sense do you think it works well for the company for the product for the metrics what do you think next what are the sections of element on the home screen? Is it a very structured category, title, image, title, image, or it's more like um, everything is everywhere, it invites you to explore a type of interface? What is that? And then ask yourself, why do they put it this way? Why do they design this way? Why would they make this choice? Next is, what do you think of that? Do you think it should be more open-ended? Should be more structured, less structured? Why? Next, is the design scalable? It means if you were to add more design features to it, is the foundation, is the base level elements, component, design system able to accommodate that? Does it feel ergonomic? Is it reachable with just one thumb, one finger, or you need two hands to interact with it? Does it have any special gesture input? Is it very swipey, left, right, up, down, diagonally? 
uh, scribble. Do those gestures make sense? Are they easy to remember? To read? Or the app has to give you instructions to remind you how to use it with gestures every single time. Do those gestures feel natural? Think about the pinching. It's a new interaction back then when Steve Jobs introduced it, but it was very natural. So everybody kind of getting used to it right now. Take a flow or use case and walk me through how you would use it. And think out loud, describe what you see and what you think about what you see. I got asked this before. I guarantee you this will show up every single time when you do an app critique. And they could give you any flow. It could be the golden flow, which is likely, but also some side flow, sub flow, maybe some edge cases flow. When you're going through that, always ask yourself, what do you think about that? Do you think this flow makes sense? Do you think the interaction model makes sense? Do you think this component comes off the bottom? Makes sense. Is it too much, too distracting? What do you think it is? And if you disagree, if you have an opinion, if you have a better idea that could help the existing design, Talk about it, how would you do differently? My hint here is for sure, speak up if you think something's missing. If you think this interface is chocolate ice cream, why isn't there a search bar here that you should mention it? Because that's your opinion, that is your design alternative that you can propose. Next, any alternative modes of interaction or input method, and what do they mean? Like, do they, does it use voice? Does it use accelerometer? Does it use a camera? Does it use gyroscope? What do they use? Do they help accomplish a particular thing? Does it make it more fun and delightful? Do those modes of input make sense? Does it help efficiency? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What about haptic feedback? Do they use it a lot? Do they use only a little? This is for iOS only. Offer your opinion. You think this is overused? You think they can actually add more to here, here, and here because it helps reinforce the message, that tab that you're doing. Talk about that. And that is interaction design. Too much talking. Let's take a coffee break, shall we? Be right back. All right, how was your coffee? And how was the ad? If it's bad, too bad. I don't get to decide what to show you. But let's get back to visual design, shall we? What is the look and feel when you open the app, you land on the first screen? Does it feel clean, modern? Is it busy? Is it very packed, very crowded? Does it feel outdated? What is the general impression of look and feel? How does the app make you feel? Do you feel Accelerated? Do you feel excited seeing this landing screen? Or do you feel sad? Or do you feel overwhelmed? What do you feel? And what do you think about that? Which directly ties to that. And then what would you do differently? Maybe you think the app is too packed. You want more space. What would you do differently? Next is the information hierarchy. Clear. Are all the sections distinguishable from one to another? What is the layout and alignment? Is everything left aligned? Is everything right aligned? Justified? centered what is it and why do you think it's aligned this particular way and what do you think about this alignment do you have anything else to offer do you think it makes sense do you agree with that next what is the use of space do they use a lot of space not enough space why do you think the designer of that app choose to design that way choose to use space in that particular way and what do you think of that next is the topography are they using several font say several font Comic Sans, custom font, generic font. Why do you think the font is used that way? What do you think about that? Anything they would do differently? Do they need extra labels? Do they need to bold the title? What is it? It's not just about font usage. It's also any text element inside an app. Talk about it, think about it. Next, is the text legible? Is it readable? Does it need more kerning, more letter spacing, more line spacing? Is everything too crowded? too small, hard to see, or they okay. Does the content have enough contrast, especially when you have text over image? Enough contrast to read everything? Is there any use of accent color? Do they even have an accent color? What color is that? Is it for just highlighting? Is it for red identity? Is it overused? Is it underused? Where else do you think they can take advantage of this accent color to make it more bright, vibrant, vivid, delightful? Next, what does this icon mean? I definitely got asked this before. When you talk about it, before you interact with it, think about what this might be. And then, after you tap on it, upon interaction, ask yourself the question, what do you think of that? Does that match your expectation? Does it not? And how would you do different if you think this is supposed to go to C, but it actually takes you to A? Mismatch, how would you do differently? Redesign the icon, add a label, or direct to another page. What is it? Next, what is the design system? 
Do you have one? Is the sound system clear? Is it consistent use across different screens? What is the pattern? Is it always image, text, image, text? Or is it just image, no text? What is the pattern? If they have a well-established good design system, this should be very clear and straightforward. If not, either they don't have one, which you can call it out, or you think it's not consistent enough, they should do it this way, this way, and this way. Talk about that. And that is visual design. Next, and the last lens we can look at is through motion design. When you interact with the app, what do you think about the bottom left transition? When you have five tabs at the bottom, when you tap on each one, do they move Sideways, is it flash to each one? How is the transition? When you tap into a particular element, how does it transition? Does it go from side to side? Slide up and down? Is it a push? Is it a modal? Is it an overlay? If you're not sure about the lingo, the language, terms, one quick hint I have for you is check out the Figma prototyping capability. When you link one frame to another, it's gonna show you the type of transition you want to make. Then that is what this means, a transition. And you can ignore the smart enemy because that is not a transition in this context. Next, a little bit more detail and technical here. What is the easing, right? What is the momentum? What is the acceleration? Well, from when things move from here to here, is it linear? Is it bouncy? Is it springy? Is it ease out? Is it easing? What is it? What do you think about that easing? How is that connected to the brand? If it's bouncy, the brand, maybe it's a little bit more on the delightful side, maybe it's a toy company, that makes sense. But if it's like a serious app, everything should be solid, rigid, maybe bouncy is not the right one. So what do you think about that? And if you disagree, how would you do differently? Should they use less spring, less bounce, more damping, less damping, what is that? Any micro interaction, when one icon more changes into another when you interact with it when you tap it when you click it anything find out if you see anything document it here does the transition inform the right app layer hierarchy does it help you orient yourself if you tap the right icon does the new content coming from the right or it comes from everywhere is it consistent is there a better way to animate just offer your opinion if you think from the right you should be on the right what purpose does this animation help serve help achieve is it about orchestrating animation so you can see everything one by one? Or is it just for delight? What is this? Are the animation quite deliberate or they're distracting? If so, or if not, what would you do about it? How would you think you can do differently? What would you propose? And that is the last lens we're gonna look at for app critique. If you're still watching, you are awesome. You deserve to win, you deserve to nail app critique. All I have to do now is to look at this worksheet Go through a few apps and fill in those questions to get you familiar with this framework. If you need a copy of this, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, and then I'll get back to you with this worksheet within 24 hours. Originally, I was also planning to have five more good to knows and tips for app critique, but this video is getting too long, so I'm gonna slot them into the next video. If you see a car in the corner up here, that means that video is out. Check that out. But since you're still watching, you're so awesome, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of one good to know and one tip. One good to know is that app critique should feel like user testing and talking with a designer co-worker. If you feel like that, that means you're getting to the right place. If you feel that way when you're prepping for it, you are heading to the right direction. The tip I will give you is that when you prepare, pay the right amount of attention to the lenses in the exact order as they're presented in the worksheet. That means pay more attention to the product lens, pay less in the motion. I'm not saying not to prepare for motion design, but product and interaction are more important than motion design in an app critique because those questions will come up more often. That's all the teasers I'm gonna drop for now. In your UX interview, a product designer will be the person giving you that app critique. And then later in the process, a product manager might come in and give you more product-oriented, product-focused UX interviews. If you want to ace that round, it's important to understand what PMs do and even better, what questions that they might ask you. And that sounds familiar. Ah, I remember now. I've actually used my best design thinking and craft to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to help support this channel and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Tschüss.